Hello fe fellow coders, this is uh, Pavel and this is part two of the uh, encryption and decryption exercise from the book Visual C Sharp 2012 How to Program. This is exercise 541. So in uh, our previous exercise uh, or a previous part uh, of the video, we uh, created our base class that has four digits that will be storing the actual digits that the user enters. We have, uh, uh, we get in the digits by uh, getting the reminder of the input of 10, the reminder of 10, uh, which gives us the last number of the, of the integer. And uh, we will assign these uh, to our digits uh, we start from four because again we starting from the back of the input and in this, in this ex exercise uh, we can actually do the ac calculations uh, for the encryption which uh, we are supposed to replace each digit with the result of adding seven to the digit, digit and getting the reminder after dividing the value by 10 and then we're supposed to swap it uh, the first with the third and the second with the fourth uh, and we already have the swap method in place because we are uh, going to be using that for both encryption and decryption so we we just code it once and you will use it multiple times all right so let's do the encryption i'm going to create a class and i'll call it encryption and uh, first thing we inherit from the encrypt decrypt base class. Now, this class, the base class, is uh, expecting an integer input, that the, the four digit integer that the user enters. So we need to go and create our uh, constructor that receives input the integer and we will pass it to our base class so we'll pass the to input to the base and this is our constructor now in uh, our encryption class all we have to do is really perform the calculation and uh, uh, so uh, we can create uh, one main kind of method that returns string. It returns string uh, of uh, I'm sorry, this one the get final output basically. Uh, but it will I'll make it so uh, it contains all the necessary methods for the encryption. So I will call it encrypt input and um, first thing. I'm going to get the encrypted values. So I, uh, I'll just create a method. Go get encrypted values. Now I don't have the method yet, so let me create it. Uh, I can make it private because it's going to be called only from this uh, this particular method called encrypt input. So private void get encrypted uh, values. And in it, um, I will uh, assign the encrypted value to each of the digits. Now, basically, I will assign the formula that uh, the exercise calls for, the adding 7 and then do the reminder of 10 to it. So um, I'll make a separate one, uh, separate method, private integer. Uh, just, I'll just call it encrypt value formula like that and it will pass the uh, we will pass a digit to it uh, integer digit because we have four digits uh, four separate digits so we can do one method pass the uh, appropriate digit and perform the calculation against it so and the formula goes uh, digit equals 
So they want us to add 7 to it. So I will do digit plus 7. And then do the mod 10. And this will assign a new encrypted value to our digit. And now we can return it. So we will return the digit. Again, we have four different digits. Uh, so we will pass it to this formula, assign a different value based on this uh, formula and return it. So what I have to do over here, I can go and go to the, my uh, individual digits, one, two, three, and four, and assign the value or call this uh, call this method uh, to it and pass in its own value to it. So it's gonna be digit, uh, digit one equals, encrypt value uh, formula and I will pass itself to it digit one so again if digit one is five it will say call this formula performs the uh, calculation return it and the result of the calculation will now be stored in our digit one and I'll do the same for uh, digit two three and four so it's gonna be two three and four so again this two three and four and um, that's really all except uh, this is our main method uh, like main point of this uh, whole class because this this method simply calls other methods uh, and then uh, returns the final output so for now we got the encrypted values we have the digits uh, when we do that uh, they already have uh, assigned values based on get digits that's being passed straight from the constructor of the base class so that's performed first so we don't have to worry about that but now we have to swap them now we already have the swap method over here in the base class so all we have to do is uh, call that method so we will simply swap digits we have access to it because we are inheriting from the encrypt decrypt base class and that's really all that's all the encryption all we have to do now is simply output it so we will return and we will return the final output which is a method get final output again that we have in our base class so we will call it and the result will be returned as a string we are returning a string so return get final output it doesn't take any parameters so it will call the method it will put the digits one two three and four together return it over here and then return it back to whatever we call it from which is gonna be from our main program and this is our encryption now our decryption is going to be very similar. So let me just create a class called uh, decryption. And uh, I'm just gonna kind of copy paste few things. Well, first I have to do the constructor public encryption and again it takes an integer input which we will pass oh, i'm sorry i forgot to inherit uh, we will inherit from the encrypt decrypt base so we will pass the input to our uh, base class just like we did with the encryption so we'll do the same with the decrypt input which is going to be the main method for this class uh, that will contain or call other methods and return the final result uh, which I, I'm just going to copy paste it from this one because it's going to be very similar except it's going to be decrypt instead of encrypt so it's going to be get decrypted value swap digits actually stays the same and get final input uh, final output stays the same as well so I just have to create and again it can be private uh, private method because we are calling it only from inside this class 
So it's gonna be void the uh, get decrypted uh, values. And just like before, we will assign the digits. We, will, we need to get the digits from the input. So it's gonna be digit one, and except it's gonna be not encrypted, uh, but decrypted. I will copy paste it here and here. And of course I will create that method as well. But currently I don't have it yet, so private integer the crypt the crypt value formula and it takes the integer digit each individual digit just like we did for the encryption it's the same the only thing that really changes is the formula itself now how do we reverse the uh, the formula how do we assign the value to our digit well, uh, before we added 7 to it and then did the uh, uh, mod of 10. So we can reverse it by simply going digit. Since we add him before for encryption, for decryption, we have to, we have to deduct. We have to get minus 7 instead of plus 7. But we have to get plus 10 to make it a... Uh, because if the digit is, for example, uh, let's say 3, 3 minus 7 would give us a negative 4. But we want to give it to uh, make a mod of 10, so we need to get it plus 10, which would make it 14, and then mod 10, which would make it 4. That way we, we, we won't have any uh, negative values. Again, because if the digit, again, for example, 5, 5 minus 7 is negative 2 plus 10 is uh, what? Uh, that's 8. So uh, mat 10, 8 mat 10 would give us 8. That would be our final digit. And uh, let's say if I have a number like a 9, 9 minus 7 is 2 plus 10 is 12, and 12 mat 10 would give us 2. So that is uh, how you revert or reverse the uh, encryption formula and we will return the digits just like we did for the encryption and this is all for our decryption uh, there's nothing less uh, nothing more very simple and now let's do the uh, program to that to our main method and create the object and display the result and that will be part three of this uh, exercise so uh, stick around watch the next video for the conclusion of this exercise i'll see you then